everyone, and welcome to the Willy Wonka Fibers podcast. I'm Anne, and you can find me on the web, uh, let's see, on Ravelry as Bunny Spinner. I'm on Facebook as Willy Wonka Fibers, as well as on the web at www.willywonkafiber.com. And I also have a group on Ravelry for Willy Wonka Fibers. So you can join me in any of those locations uh, if you care to. Thank you to uh, all of my long-term listeners to the podcast. And if you're new, welcome. Glad to have you here. Um, It's been a really crazy day, but I'm going to try to get this podcast in because I did want to talk to you guys about going to Stitches, which is where I'm headed to tomorrow. Um, I've got two days of driving out to California. This is Stitches West. And then uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'll be vending there. My booth number, if you were planning to attend, is 1247. Uh, I'm over next to where the demo area booth is. So if you're looking for me, that's the place to find me. Easy to find. I'm sure folks can point you in the right direction. Um, I have been up to my eyeballs in dying, as you might guess, for the last month. Everything is packed. Um, My husband helped me this morning. We got everything in the vehicle. I even have space for clothes. That's a a good thing, I think. Um, Tons and tons of product. I'm taking probably twice as much to this show, or close to it, um, compared to pretty much any other show that I've done. So um, I've got lots of different things. I made a point to take multiple skeins of multiple colors. So if you're in the market for something for a specific project, please swing by and see me um, and introduce yourself. I'd love to know uh, my podcast listeners actually in the flesh, so to speak. Um, It should be really fun. They always have great classes. Um, I'm really looking forward to having the opportunity to um, get to know some folks who have communicated with me with via email or through my website, but who I haven't met in person yet. So it should be fun. Um, I also wanted to let you all know that the author Joanna Johnson will be doing two specific book signings. She will be in my booth on and off pretty much the whole weekend. She's graciously helping me out. Um, and her, all of her books will be available in my booth, but her newest one, which is Henry's Hat, super cute, super cute book, uh, that will be available and Joanna will be doing book signings from, I believe it's 12 to 2 on Friday and Saturday in my booth. And if she's in my booth and you'd like to have a signed copy of any of her other books, um, she's happy to do that. She will also have her um, pattern book, Green Gable Knits. Uh, there as well, which is based on the Anne of Green Gables stories and has some great patterns in it. So um, so that will be kind of fun. It'll give us a chance to visit in between the craziness. Um, and she's going to be there to help me set up and, you know, try to sort of help move traffic through. So that's, uh, that's going to be a good thing. Um, I did want to mention something which is not specifically Stitches West oriented, but I will have this new colorway at Stitches, and that is the March self-striping sock. Um, This one, the colorway is called Caldera, and uh, I was inspired for this one by the uh, volcano that is sort of right behind our house. It's obviously a now dormant one, but originally this area where I live in northern New Mexico was formed by a volcanic eruption and after the eruption the volcanic caldera collapsed. If you've watched the television show Longmire, you've seen the caldera. It's gorgeous. It used to be a cattle ranch and they still do run cattle on it, but now it's going to be converted to a national park. And so um, there's tons of trails. I've, we rode our horses there uh, several times. There's elk, there's bear, um, 
it's just it's a gorgeous place but I wanted to do something with some brighter colors in it so I picked the sort of um, black and red color combination and then this section is a hand-painted um, multicolor that has gray and little flecks of red I think you can see that um, the sample is knit on my Ayrton sock which is the merino cashmere nylon blend but again, you can order it on any of the four sock bases. This is a 64 in, or 64 stitch uh, sock leg. I did a short row heel on this one. I haven't done one of those in a while, and I just wanted to do something other than an afterthought heel. Um, the striping pattern for these is, uh, let's see, two of the red, six, two of the red, ten of the hand paint. So slightly wider. Um, stripes of the hand paint and narrower stripes of the red and sort of medium stripes of the black. So these, uh, this colorway is available on the website. Uh, you can pre-order that to ship in March. Um, obviously I won't be shipping anything over the next week since I will be in California with all of my stock. Um, but this is up on the website and I will put a link in the podcast notes for anybody who's interested in in ordering this colorway for next month for the Colors of New Mexico group. Um, the online store obviously will stay open but like I said I will not be shipping anything for this entire week. And depending on what you order, it may be a bit after I get back next week. I won't I won't be home till the 23rd, which is Tuesday. Um, my husband is holding the fort for a whole week with the crazy dogs, cat, all of it on his own. Okay. Um, so anyway, Stitches West, that's kind of the big shop news. Um, and uh, I will have a few things that are exclusive to the show one of which is the shawl that you see behind me. This is my Beach Cove shawl. Uh, the pattern just released today on Ravelry and I'll post a link there. You can order the pattern and download it at any point in time. This is a one skein project. That's a gradient. Um, four stitches west. I am um, going to have kits that will consist of the yarn to make this pattern, which you can see is a gradient that runs from kind of a soft, really soft sand color through seafoam green, through a really pale blue, and then down here at the bottom it's darker blues. Um, this pattern uses one skein of my Rhiannon sock. Um, it takes about 450 yards and it's going to use up every last little bit of that. Um, the pattern's relatively straightforward. It's got garter stitch sections here at the beginning. Let's see if I can get that so you guys can see it. They go into eyelets, which are just yarn overs knit two togethers with um, rows of stockinette in between. And then down at the bottom there's one little set of laciness that again is just yarn overs and knit two togethers. That's all that there is to that. You bind off and when you block it, it forms those cute little wavy points, which I really like. Um, it's a good size. It's big enough you can wear it with the ends wrapped all the way around in the front, like that. Um, or you can wear it like I had it on my dress form with, with the point hanging down in the front. So the kit that I will have, uh, if you're going to make it to stitches, it, it includes the yarn to knit this, uh, which is the one skein. It includes the pattern. It includes a project bag that's themed with these same colors and all kinds of really cute little beach motifs on it. The inside has um, blue and white starfish the exterior which if I had planned ahead and had not packed first thing this morning I would have one to show you um, but I will take a photo and and post that uh, in the podcast notes as well um, that is um, little seagulls 
kind of uh, grayish blue waves, sand dunes, beach chairs, cute little signs on it. it I really like them. Um, my friend Teresa made them. I have a very limited number, so if you know that you want one of these kits, get to the booth early because I can't promise how long they'll be there. Um, and then they also include a set of starfish um, stitch markers that my friend Joy made. Um, and Joy also had made for me a whole bunch of great little sheep and leaping bunny stitch markers. And I think I mentioned on the podcast last time, if you spend more than $75 in the booth um, until supplies run out, I will get you a freebie stitch marker to take away. I've got them all attached to my business cards. They're um, through a hole, punch, hole punched on the card. So um, you can have that kind of as a takeaway, kind of fun little memento of stitches. So um, again, the Beach Cove shawl is available currently on Ravelry. Um, and you, you certainly can use whatever yarn you like. I really liked it in the gradient. I thought that the colors were soft and pretty um, <clears throat> and kind of fun for spring, which I think especially those on the East Coast, you're probably more than ready for. So that's Beach Cove Shawl. Um, and again, if you're interested in one of the kits, I would say come along to the booth on the early side of things. Um, I do have some extras of just the yarn. So if you wanted to get the yarn and the pattern, but none of the bag or the stitch markers, <clears throat> you can do that. And I will also have the yarn available um, through the website when I get back. So you can pick up a, a skein of that if you want. And if you decide you can't live without it, please just shoot me a quick message either um, via PM on Ravelry, where I'm Bunny Spinner, or hit the website um, and hit the contact me button and um, I'll be glad to put you on a list to get those dyed up as soon as I'm home. Um, I think that's about it for the sort of shop slash stitches news. Um, I am gearing up. Once I get home, I have about a month before I go to Interweave Yarn Fest, so we'll talk about that once I get my feet back under me at the end of February. Um, in terms of things that I'm working on for design work right now, I have everything finished up that's an early March deadline except for one sweater, and I am trying to crank away on that. Um, that's going to be my knit in the hotel um, in the evenings project. Um, I am two-thirds of the way through the body up to the armholes. Uh, I'm knitting the body in one piece and then I'll cast off for the armholes and work the front and the back separately and do the shaping with that. And I also have sleeve one about halfway finished. Um, I wanted to, there's an interesting cuff detail on that so I wanted to kind of work out the details and make sure it was going to make me happy before I shoved it in a bag and took it as travel knitting. Um, but I do have all of the draft written and uh, I feel I feel pretty confident to move on with that. So when I get back um, I'll have a few kind of odds and ends, smaller projects. Um, the heroines shawl for March 1st is done. That's been blocked. I took photos of it this past week. It's basically good to go. Test knitters signed off on it. So I'll have that one to show you actually at the next time that we spend some time together, which will be the end of February already. <laughs> Whoosh, that was February going by. Um, so once I get through all those, then I have a really exciting um, independent published collaboration that I am very excited to share some details with you all about. Um, and I'll start talking about that at the next podcast as well. Um, I have a designer friend who she and I got chatting about things we were interested in <clears throat> and we do have a lot of shared interests in terms of design themes and things that we like and how we like to design um, and so we decided well we should do a collection together so that will be out this fall but we can kind of start sharing some little tidbits about it with you all before then so I will have that to chat with you all about a little bit later on this spring so um, that's kind of where I am in the world of design uh, ki kind of getting off the crazy train just a little bit not too much you know I don't like to do that um, 
and uh, and getting through my deadlines, which was a really important thing for me to make sure I stayed up with before I tackled all the stitches craziness. Uh, so let's see. That was pretty much it for my world of design. We're moving along here today because I've got a million and one things I still need to get done. Um, but I did want to share some personal pro projects with you all. Um, a lot of hand spun going on. So um, I finished my dewberry cowl. Um, this is knit from a gradient skein that I spun out of the shop. The colorway is called Iceberg and it's on Falkland wool. Um, this is the front. And you can see it kind of the shaping kind of mimics that of a half circle, semicircle, circular shawl in terms of the shaping. But here's the back. And you can see the this section that's in that kind of pale aqua color is where you would be knitting back and forth. And then right there is where you join it in the round to knit it as a cow. And um, we'll talk about this piece in a moment, but let me just pop this on for you all. I wasn't 100% sure that I would love this piece, but as it turns out, I have worn it like every day. It sits really nicely. There's not a ton of extra fabric in the back, right? Because there's that little sort of V notch where you have knit back and forth and you've left it open before you join it in the round. Um, it drapes really nicely. Uh, it fits right inside either a sweater or a coat jacket's front. And it gives me just, just enough on the back of my neck that if I want to wear um, a, a scoop neck or crew neck type t-shirt or sweater, it works great. It fills in all the extra gaps. Um, it's a light layer, but it's got enough warmth to it that you actually feel like you're wearing something that's keeping the drafts off the back of your neck. Um, this size, I uh, knit this to what was written as the large size, but the yarn that I used was a sport weight and the original pattern calls for Aran weight. So this is a little bit smaller than the original pattern. Um, I think I used only 200 yards, maybe not even, maybe closer to about 190 uh, to knit this. So it would be great if you have a single skein of something in the DK Worsted Aran weight group. Um, stash Buster, absolutely, be fantastic for that. I do think I might want to knit one of these that's a, that is a true Aran weight or a slightly heavier weight just to sort of compare and contrast. They're like potato chips though. I mean, this took me two afternoons to knit and an afternoon to block. Uh, it'd be great if you've got somebody to you need to sort of bang out a gift for. Absolutely. Um, so highly recommended. Um, I really had fun with this project. Uh, this was my hand spun project number two of the year and part of the hand spun knit along that I'm hosting. Um, just a ton of fun. Uh, a plus. I had I had a great time with that project. Um, which brings me to the next project that I finished up. I kind of got this bug in my ear because I had gotten um, I had ordered a fiber which I showed you guys last time. Um, it was from Three Waters Farm for the completely twisted and arbitrary spinners spin along, knit along that they're hosting this quarter. Um, it was inspired by some 1930s artwork. The colorway was called Mirror Lake and I had ordered it on the Blueface Lester wool. Um, your choices were that or Reno Silk. So I got it on the BFL and the colors are very bright for me. I, this is kind of more me, right? It's got gray in it, dusty blue, all of that. Um, but that's okay because it's it's good to do things that you know aren't your rut. So as soon as I got the colorway and I unbraided it and I looked at the colors, I decided that I wanted to knit one of the asymmetrical triangle that are boomerang shaped. They have they come down to a point like that, and the top edge curves like that. Um, so knowing that that's how I was going to knit. Uh, the yarn and knowing that one end is has 
a very short number of stitches. You can, you start at the teeny tiny end and you open that up adding stitches on one side and decreasing on the other to form that triangular shape. Um, I knew that I wanted to manipulate the yarn to match the shaping of the pattern. And so as a result, uh, what I did was I unbraided the fiber and I saw that it had three separate color runs where the colors were very distinct. And so I broke the braid into thirds and they were almost perfect thirds. I took the first third and I split it in half lengthwise. So I had two skinnier strips that encompass that en entire color run. I then left the other two thirds, each of which was an entire color run as is. So I took the two halves of that first third, I spun each of those as singles. And then um, as I was spinning the singles, I started on that full unsplit third, attaching that all along. So I had shorter runs of the color in the first third of the singles, and then I had longer color runs in the final two thirds of the singles. So when I applied them together, the colors stayed fairly true um, in a kind of a stripey way. There was a little bit, there's a few sections where the plies weren't exactly perfect, but it came out pretty close. I was really, really happy with it. So a lot of the sections are very clear color where the two plies are exactly the same color and then they maybe start to shift a little to sort of blend till you get to the next color. So for instance, here at the beginning, you can see it starts with turquoise, goes into green, a gold, kind of greeny gold, a royal blue, dark purple, um, kind of an herb green, gold, purple again, and then this royal blue again. So that is the end of the first color repeat. And then as the shawl progressed, it repeated that color run a second time. And what I knit was one of Susan Ashcroft's Quaker yarn stretchers. And it gives you a lovely sort of biased fabric. It's super straightforward. It's um, just rows of stockinette interspersed with either one purl row or three rows of reverse stockinette. So you can, let's see if you can see the texture in that. Yeah, pretty well there. And I would say those colors are pretty true. They're, they're very bright. Um, but super cheerful. I This is another fun one that fits kind of in the fold of a coat. It's a great little extra bit of color. Um, and I think I knit this one in three days. Yes, I knit a lot of it while we were watching the Super Bowl, but um, even so, th this was not a difficult long-term project. Um, all of Susan Ashcroft's patterns, well, not, not all of them, but the bulk of them are knit where written where you can knit with almost any weight yarn with al almost any yardage. She gives you kind of your minimum number of yards you can get by with to make a project. Um, I had just about the right amount of yardage that she said was the minimum amount um, and this was a DK weight um, which this pattern I think is written for but you can use sport, you can use fingering, you can use worsted. Um, and she has several others that are the same kind of wearable shape that have different stitch patterns in them if you didn't want to just have the um, reverse stockinette stripes. Um, easy to block, really, you know, a, another great stash busting kind of project. You could do it even if you had scrappies and you wanted to do the stripes. You could, you could easily do that and use up whatever you had. Knit until you run out of yarn. It's a perfect project for that. So it works great for hand spun in that, in that instance. Um, I have a few others of hers that I've earmarked, um, but I will link to the Quaker Yarn Stretcher pattern in the podcast notes, and then you guys can take a look at her entire pattern catalog on Ravelry if you decide you want to make something similar. So those are the two hand spun projects that I've gotten done in the month of February. Um, I have one other that's kind of on deck and 
I, it's my carrot. I've promised myself that if I finish the sweater sample that I'm working on on deadline, which is using up all of my size 6 needles, and this next project that's hand spun needs a size 6 needle, if I finish it up and I get that project off the needles, I can yank the size 6s I need and cast on for that next hand spun project. But I'm I, I'm not going to let myself touch it because I know I will get distracted. It's another gradient and I'm really looking forward to the pattern. So I have to finish work knitting first. That's the priority. Um, so let's talk about my other hand spun things that I finished up this week. <clears throat> um, I had talked last time about a combo spin that I was working on as part of a challenge project. I'm really, really pleased with this yarn on multiple levels. Um, first off, these are two of my oldest braids in stash. Um, they're Fat Cat Knits and they're Blue Face Lester. Um, two completely different colorways. And when I talked to Ginny, who's the dyer at Fat Cat Knits, we think the tags on them, she quit using them in 2008. So these are at least that old and maybe older because I, it was pre-Ravelry fiber stash, so I, I didn't have them recorded in Ravelry. I'm not sure how long I've, I've had them, but it was time for them to get spun up. The colorways are were great. I, I don't know why I hadn't spun them before, but at any rate, this was a good push for me to do that. Um, I spun one ply of each colorway. The paler colorway, I split into eighths. Eight, um, I split the braid in half, and then I split split each of those halves into four long strips. The other colorway that was much brighter, I actually split into, I believe it was 15 long strips. Um, I didn't worry too much that they were exactly the same size. I just wanted to break the colors up and not have super long color runs throughout. And what I wound up with was two skeins of a two ply fingering weight. Um, I have just under it wound up being 7.9 ounces um, and it's 763 yards. Um, it's a, I just really, really was happy with this yarn. It wound up being kind of more than the sum of its parts. Um, I mean, the rovings were pretty, but I just love all the color blending that's going on in those skeins. Um, I don't, have a for sure project picked out for this yet. I, I'm either going to do a large shawl and um, just use these, which I'm leaning towards, or I'm going to do uh, like a summer weight garment and pick one of the colors in it, maybe the, the, that kind of pale purple, um, that sort of orchid and use that as either um, the hems or the front bands of a short sleeve cardigan or do a, like a pullover shell shaped piece. Um, these are going to marinate for a while. Um, I'll have to think about what I want to do with them. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards the shawl, but we'll see. I, I don't wear a ton of big shawls. Um, and I think I might get a more wear out of a layering piece, but we'll see, uh, you know, it's not, they're not going to get hurt sitting in my, my bin of hand spun. Um, so I finished that project and then the next project that I spun up was the February Three Waters Farm Club Fiber. The base fiber was Organic Polworth and the colorway was called Light in the Trees. And when this came um, to the house, I immediately decided that I wanted to do a three ply with it. I wanted to do something that kind of broke up all the colors and really showed it off um, as kind of a heathery with little pops of that blue showing through against the greens and browns. So I spun this up. This is also kind of a personal challenge yarn. Um, I I rarely, rarely spin anything heavier than worsted, and I don't even spin worsted or DK that often. So this was my challenge to myself. Um, so this is a bulky weight three ply, and um, it took some work. I really, really had to slow down the speed uh, on the wheel 
and concentrate on keeping the singles fat because they really wanted to default to my kind of brainless spinning, um, which is more like the fingering, two ply fingering weight. Um, but I was aiming for a hundred yards and um, four ounces, and I wound up with 3.8 ounces and 98 yards. So it's pretty close, it's pretty spot on. Um, there is a pattern which I will link to in the show notes as well. Um, that's from Romy Hill's uh, Great Oddments collection, where she challenged herself to basically do a bunch of one skein projects. And there's a really cute hat, the Elven Cloche. Um, it's got a big leaf on it. It's fairly form fitted. It has a little turn up brim. Super cute. Uh, I want to knit that pattern with this yarn. I think it would be fun. Um, I spun this up as kind of a fractal spin, meaning the first third I split the braid into, into half lengthwise and spun that for the singles. The second third of the braid I split lengthwise into four pieces spun those singles and then the final third I split into twelfths and spun that into thirds. So there's sections in here where the colors are very close. There's a little section where it's all blues and then there's a section where the blue and the brown and the green are all sort of tweedily living together. Um, so I think that might be interesting knit up as a hat. There'll be little blocks of color and then there'll be sort of the blended areas. Um, so that is another spin that I got finished up for February. Um, on the wheel right now, I'm working on what was the, or is the February colorway that went out to the Wooly Wonka Art Gallery Fiber Club members. Um, it is inspired by the Edvard Munch painting called The Scream. Um, base fiber was BFL and silk, a 75-25 blend. And for the hand paint folks, um, which is the bulk of my club, I did a, a gradient. And it looks like this. It's got a gold and kind of an orangey red going to purple and then this dark blue in the center. It's almost a blackish blue. Um, so that fiber, this is actually the last club fiber. I have to drop off on my way out of town tomorrow morning to one of my locals. Um, mine I've already started. I decided I'm going to keep it as a gradient and so I split the braid in half lengthwise. I weighed each of those. They're, they were pretty close. One was 1.9 and the other was 1.98 or something like that in terms of weight and so I'm gonna spin really long color runs so all of the gold all of the red so on and then ply them so I get a two ply and I'm shooting for a very light fingering almost lace weight two ply yarn from that I, I think it's headed for a shawl um, I have a couple of different ones in mind that I might uh, might pick for that but anyway, that's what's on the wheel, and I'm spinning this up on my Hanson e-spinner, which is super portable, and so I'm actually going to take that with me on the road. I have a carrying case for it that fits my Lazy Kate, extra bobbins, some fiber, plus the Hanson all in that, and it fits perfectly on the floor in the front seat. It's my... Um, when I'm done driving, when I'm done bending, I don't have brain power for much else necessarily. Um, it's just like a nice relaxing half an hour, hour I can spend um, in, in the hotel room. So I'm going to take that along with me and work away at it. Since it's I'm spinning it up so finely, it'll take me a while. Um, I mean, I have a week that I will be gone to California and by the time I come back, so I will probably have it finished, but it will take me the bulk of that time that I'm away to work on that. Um, so I think that's it for personal project stuff, hand spun, all of that. Um, kind of the back of a galloping horse here today because I'm off to run like two more loads of laundry so that I can finish packing my clothes so that I can finish packing the car and uh, throw stuff in there tomorrow morning, you know, my cooler and a few other things and hit the road fairly early. Um, to start the drive west. So um, I hope to see some of you there. 
Um, again, please stop by the booth uh, 1247 and say hi, introduce yourselves uh, so I can put a face with maybe an email or in passing Ravelry avatar name or something like that. Um, and it's always great to meet folks in person. Um, sort of a solitary little world that I'm in most of the time and then I have these huge social events. Um, so that's that's always kind of nice to get me out of the house and um, prevent what my husband calls the uh, the hermit, which I have a tendency towards. Um, so next time when we talk, it'll be the end of the month. Um, I hopefully will have a few hand spun things to show you. Uh, I'll have a new pattern to share with you guys then, actually two, because I will have the previews for the the March sweater club. That's sweaters done, been photographed. I may have it on its stitches if you come through. Um, I'm taking that DK base with me, so um, I may be wearing that as a sample in the booth. Um, and I'll have a few other tidbits to talk to you about going forward for the Interweave Yarn Fest, as well as kind of a summary post um, here on the podcast about stitches, which I'm very excited for. So until then, thank you all very much for listening and watching. Um, I hope you have a great couple of weeks and I will check in with you all at the end of the month. Bye.